Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, doing a new movie review this week called Simply Bright, which is the latest film by Will Smith, Joe Egerton, along with writer Max Landis, the son of John Landis, the director and writer himself. And it's also directed by David Ayer, who's been known for doing films such as Training Day, which he wrote, uh, directed by Anton Fuqua. He also went on to do films like Street Kings, End of Watch, Sabotage, and of course, Suicide Squad, which I enjoy. And this is his latest film that's being made exclusively for Netflix. It got released on December 22nd of 2017, which actually had her premiere at the Regency Westwood Village in Westwood. For a while so it was great and this is a big budget project yep just made 90 million dollars um, that they earned for the the project alone that they did yeah. but it's not exactly a box office smash or anything like that like they're expecting but it's not released um, in theaters nationwide it just had a premiere at one feeder, so that's all. Um, unfortunately, this movie is getting negative reviews from professional critics, and I'm sorry, but I totally disagree with them, every single one of them. I'm s because there is no way that Bright is worse than films like Fifty Shades Dumber, Rough Nights, Flatliners Remake, the Emoji Movie, Baywatch, Chips, Snatch, those kind of movies that I could think of that just came out in 2017. Because quite honestly, I think it's a lot better than I thought. It was good to see Will Smith back on his game and it's interesting that he's doing a Netflix movie. Uh, Joe Egerton is actually very good in this film too. I mean, he's a very underrated actor. And it's good to see that he's getting more work. Um, and I thought the film really has a good mix of um, of fairies, the orcs, humans, all all together. And the fact that even though it's basically police corruption and you know, racism and all this other stuff in the mix, I thought it worked. I mean, the fact that this movie set in Los Angeles. Perfect location for it. And it, it has a bit of alienation in the mix, you know, which is a good movie that I saw a long time ago. The film that later became a TV series and all the TV movies that follow. I thought it was enjoyable. But I guess, you know, that's what you get when you have critics like, um, like Roper and all the rest just trashing this movie. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you this, I mean, I I'm kind of amazed that this movie is getting more negative reviews than Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Now, that's a bad film, a bad sequel that just came out, and I just can't believe it got a big surprise somehow. I mean, geez, did they get obsessed with Nick Jonas, or the fact that because, you know, The Rock is teaming up with Kevin Hart since Central Intelligence? Because I know that film got positive reviews, and, and that was a big surprise for me. Because I did enjoy it, and I still do. That they decided to give that film a pass, or maybe because Karen uh, Gillian is playing a hot chick in the film. I mean, is is that what they're expecting, or the fact that Jack Black is playing a goofball? I don't get it. I'm sorry. It's just another example of Sony just uh, hyping up on their own game. You know, and I hate to pick on Sony these days, but that's the problem. It's getting worse. So. You know, and, and, and on top of that, speaking of Netflix, there are some bad films that came out that are worse than Bright. Like, for example, The Babysitter, which just got a pass from critics. That's the film with, with actress Bella Thorne. I mean, come on, really. There's even the Justin Timberlake... And the Tennessee kids, the Tennessee assholes, 
and all these other stupid garbage, and they gave those films a pass. The Ridiculous Six, The Do-Over, the two films uh, that Adam Sandler did. Come on, really? I'd rather watch Bright than any of those bad films out there. That's for sure. Yeah, I I'm sorry. I you know, just sometimes critics just don't know what the hell they're talking about. And to me, I just call that bullshit. That's another example why I don't trust them these days. They always keep giving some shitty movies a pass. And they're always um, trashing some of the biggest surprise movies that we've seen. And that's why these films are considered to be underrated. Because they're not giving them a chance. And that's the problem. <sighs> Sorry I had to get that off my chest, but that's how I felt with today's critics or anybody else. But I guess it's just me. Well, but on on the base of that level, I think it's a lot better than I thought. It was a great spot for me. It's great to see Will Smith doing something good for a change. So, if you ask me, even the fact that they even call this film his worst film of his entire career, it's obviously haven't seen the movie Wild Wild West, because that was the worst film. So it was After Earth. I don't believe this, man. I just really don't. Well, anyway. <laughs> Let's get to the film. Because I'm definitely going to say a lot of good positives about the film. There's some flaws in it. I'll give you that. But I think it's going to be a lot better than, than what the critics gave. So here we go. Stars Will Smith, Joe Egerton, Nomi Wat Pace, who's been known for doing films such as the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, you know, all the entire series of that. And of course she went on to do the film Prometheus. Lucy Fry, who's been in a bad film, by the way, called Vampire Academy, which is basically a bad cross of Monster High with meets uh, <laughs> Twilight, in a way. But at least she's in a good film. Edgar Ramirez, Ike Barinholtz, Happy Anderson, yes, that's his name, Happy Anderson. Don Alibri, Matt Gerald, Margaret Cho, yeah, that's right, Margaret Cho, the comedian, who has done a lot of work, including that TV show that she used to have called uh, All American Girl, which it was a very short lived series. And she continued to go on doing her stand-up. And she also had done some other appearances. She, she was actually in an action film before called Face Off with John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. A very enjoyable film by director John Woo. Brad William Hinks. Jay Hernandez. Veronica Nigo. And Alex Moraz. It's written by Max Landis, who's also the executive producer, and it's directed by David Ayer. The movie began sitting in the alternative Los Angeles, California, where humans are living uneasily peace with other creatures such as the orcs, centaurs, and dwarfs, as well as all the other human race out there. That's where we meet L.A. police officer, veteran named Daryl Ward, who's played by Will Smith, who teams up with his partner, who's the first Orcish police officer named Nick Jacoby, who's played by Joe Egerton. Jacoby, of course, um, is outtrotalized by humans for his race and by orcs for his position, which apparently... Ward wasn't getting along with his partner very well, especially after he got shot by a criminal that just robbed at a local liquor store that turned out to be an orc. And he's been getting nightmares ever since. So, when he woke up this morning, he begins to find out that there is actually a young elf that's flying around crazy going into near the, the bug zapper of his house, 
which is actually a dragonfly, if you think about it. Uh, uh, an interesting uh, dragonfly creature that they got. So he, <laughs> his wife wanted him to, to actually kill it, even though he doesn't want to, but he decided to do it anyway. He grabs a broom, while this dragonfly is going insane into the bug zapper, he just knocks it down right in front of uh, all the next door neighbors who are just basically egging him to do it. He had a bunch of game members. And then Jacoby arrives uh, to pick him up and go all the way down to the police station in Elvin, which is a, a small town that's run by orcs and all around, and even dwarfs everywhere, that's um, on a small section of, of downtown L.A. Now, Ward didn't want to work together with Jacoby, that he wanted to work with all the other police officers around, where you see Margaret Cho playing the Sergeant Chin, and then along with all the other cops around, and, and I know they soon became corrupt. So because of that, he had no choice, because no one else wants to ride with Ward. That he decided to continue to go with Jacoby. They soon found a Debordi, which is who owns the Shield of Light. He actually has a sword and talking in Orcish. That suddenly they're, that both of their officers are in a prophecy, and Ward suddenly becomes blessed with it. And while Jacoby is actually booking the, the prisoner, all of a sudden Ward was being approached by the Eternal Affairs to say that they believe that Jacoby is put into his uh, ethnic uh, loyalties before his partner. So he was being pressured to actually um, have Jacoby confess on tape, which would lead to a lot of big problems, which that alone would actually get him into bigger trouble, especially when when the cops themselves are actually ready to shoot him, which that's what happens when during that night when Ward and Jacoby had responded to the disturbance inside the safe house that the Shield of Light lives, and then we begin to find out that that there were a bunch of um, there were a bunch of gangsters hanging around there. I mean, there was a there was a huge shooting that was going on, and they shot him. And once they went inside, that's when they noticed that all the the bodies had been burned down. All became skeletons. And then they found a an elf that's being embedded into the wall. That's starting to look like a sculpture. And that's where we meet a young elf named Tika who's played by Lucy Fry. Yeah. So apparently the elf woman was still uh, living inside the wall. That's until she got sliced down by the Afernes, yeah, who are the villains in the movie. Uh, that's, that's run by leader Layla, who's played by Nomi Ratpace. Well, anyway, they found a magic wand that's blue, and apparently, as Jacoby puts it, it's actually a nuclear weapon that grants wishes, and it can only be commanded by a bright, which can't be a rare person who can command the, the magic wand. But for those who are not um, commanded by it, they're going to get killed anyway. They're going to explode, and they're going to be burned down like, like all the other... Um, corpses out there who are skeletons. So then the cops had arrived. They saw the magic wand that the ward had showed them to and then they're actually ready to to form a plan to actually shoot Jacoby. And if uh, Ward doesn't work together with them, they're gonna shoot him too. So Ward was just trying to um, got so uh, complicated and confused that he decided to just go after Jacoby started to held him on gunpoint until the officers came by and they were ready to shoot so then uh, Ward had no choice but to shoot the officers because 
he begins to tell them that yes, they were going to kill him. So then all the local gangsters uh, came by, and including one that's that's in a wheelchair, and suddenly they they want to get what they want, and and they they even turned out that they wanted the magic wand themselves. So then, because of that, they escape inside a, a bulletproof um, police SUV, the yeah, Alambatica, to go into a, a, a local safe place where where no one could find it. But then they got bumped in, into other um, gang members from the Orcish uh, community. And when they went inside to a local bar, and they got shot down, along with all the, the gangsters that were going after them, so then Ward and Jacoby had begun to call uh, the internal affairs about, about the magic wand that, that they're about to go after. And that's when they begin to uh, begin to find out by the Infernes. And that is before um, the orcs out there, yeah, the, including that leader that they have, and capture them. Uh, they're actually about to kill Jacoby. He wants them all the way down into the into that giant big hole until he got re-emerged by the magic wand that Tika had um, possesses him with and he suddenly lives so so they had to find a way to actually stop the Infernes and everyone else before they take over the entire world by storm um, well, anyway, that, that's all I can think of at this point. I don't want to give too much away. Um, I know because sometimes it's, it's not easy having to, to explain f uh, fully about the movie. But I thought it was well done, uh, well made, and, and pretty interesting too. It, like, it, it basically, like I said before, it, it has a mix of alienation with orcs and all the other creatures uh, coming around. And you basically see a lot of elves. But I think they could have had plenty of them too. I, I, I'll be honest with you. There could have been more mystical creatures that they could have put into it. But that's all they got um, so far. Um, I thought Will Smith did a great job. I mean, this is the Will Smith, as we all know, since he's been doing other films like uh, Bad Boys along with the sequel. Yeah, which I know critics had trashed that film too. Yeah, take my word for it. Um, as well as um, I Robot. Yeah, those movies that he did, and even the Hancock too. So it's good to see that he gets to play the the Will Smith as we all know <laughs> and love. Yeah, even during the French Prince of Bel Air days, <laughs> Joe Egerton was very good too. Um, Underneath the the makeup that he has, you know, playing the orc. I mean, this was perfect. I mean, this is actually one of his greatest performances um, ever. I mean, he does kind of remind me a bit like uh, George. Um, at this rate, his real name is San Francisco. <laughs> is played by Manny Patikin in that role. So it has that bit of that too. We begin to find out his background and you know that you know he he works with all the orcs, but then. And the fact that even the humans couldn't get along with them very well either. So that that's an interesting background that he has. And I, I thought the, the elves that they got and all the other creatures, not too many, but we got what we got, were actually very good too. And I thought Nomi Wattpaste did a great job playing the villain, uh, Leela. So she was very strong. And... And of course, Tika, that's played by Lucy Fry, I mean, she's very good. Because we definitely know how she feels. I mean, the fact that we learned that it was her sister that's doing all this. So I guess you have to go more ways than one. Has some great special effects. Very stunning. And a lot of... Um, comedy elements that they put into it, it worked. Plus there's a lot of great action scenes that they had in the film. 
and especially the that one moment uh, when they were at a local gas station uh, they um, at a local gas food mart where uh, suddenly the Infernis had arrived and, and they're about to go after uh, Ward and Jacoby Antica so uh, one of the Infernis actually drove the car that which basically uh, their other officer got or been shot down and and then they went all the way straight down into the uh, the gas food mart and about to run over uh, Jacoby slams them into the uh, the freezer aisle like several times until he until he got out of there and just beats the shit out of him and there's even one scene where Ward was about to grab the the, the gas tank and was about to shoot one of the Infernis that was really interesting and then the Antigua was about to uh, to fight against them and and doing all these flips yeah and all that it was cool also there's a message in the movie too like they had a lot of graffiti of uh, spreading around and it even says the message uh, involving Bright and, and the Orcs and all of that uh, I, I thought that worked I mean this is something you don't really see these days but I know you see a lot of graffiti around in Los Angeles, so you, so you know how how dumpy it would look. So I, I'm glad they went for an actual feel to it. So so it has a mix of fantasy with action all around. It just works. There's also going to be a sequel to this movie, so I hope that when they do the sequel for uh, Bright, I hope they go for other mystical creatures, and then, and then they'll go for other stuff too. Maybe some more bickering and all this uh, comedy elements that the first movie had. Yeah, in fact, I love all the comedy elements that they also put into the film. You know, between the Ward and Jacoby. I, I just thought it worked, in a way. But I guess I can understand the flaws that the film did have. Like, for example, I think they took the, the racism and all this other, utter hatred uh, and police corruption way too seriously. Maybe that was the problem. Um, I think there could have been more of uh, all the creatures that could have been included too. I can understand that. But other than that though, I thought it was um, well paced, well shot. No shaky cams included. That's a plus. And the special effects were well done. I enjoyed it. It's worth watching. So, by any chance, Check it out on Netflix if you have to. Take it on your own risk. Um, try to uh, just don't listen to what they have to say. But if, but you know, I I know it's their opinion, and I'll give you that. But hey, if you don't like the movie too, that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But on the other hand, I I think it's a lot better than I thought. So that's my opinion. And I'm going to keep it that way. So I give Bright three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.